Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for convening this uh, important and timely hearing. Uh, certainly natural disasters are disruptive and traumatic life events. Uh, to suddenly uh, lose your home, your savings, family heirlooms, um, or even the lives of loved ones has devastating impacts on survivors' mental health. When this trauma is left unaddressed, survivors can develop drastic mental health consequences. In fact, experiencing a natural disaster by age five is associated with 6%, a 16% increase in mental health or substance use issues in adulthood. Again, experiencing a natural disaster by age five is associated with a 16% increase in a mental health or substance use issues in adulthood. A large scale study of earthquake survivors found that one in four had PTSD. Fortunately, uh, Administrator FEMA already does have a program in place that assists territories and tribes after a disaster to address the immediate mental health impacts. Administrator Criswell, can you please tell us what the crisis counseling program is and how FEMA has worked with localities to help survivors in communities across the country? Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. You know, our mental health is so important, both for disaster survivors, as well as I stress it for my employees as well. And our crisis counseling program is definitely a tool that is available to help disaster survivors manage the stress and cope with the losses that they've experienced from this disaster. It's a program that's available under the individual assistance program when that is authorized for a major disaster declaration and executed by the state. Um, really important resource available to help individuals that have been impacted by a disaster. Thank you. Uh, and I thank you also for including your staff in that. We have to heal the healers as well. Uh, this life-saving program uh, has been deployed nationwide in response to the COVID-19 pandemic in Puerto Rico following hurricanes Irma and Maria and in New York following September 11th terrorist attacks to name a few. However, there are many people who survive disasters from terrorist attacks to mass violence and natural disasters that can't take advantage of this program. And Minister Criswell, can you, uh, as you know, there are two types of disaster declarations, uh, major disasters and emergency declarations. Is the crisis counseling program currently available following emergency declarations? Congressman. Congresswoman, no, it is not currently available for emergency declarations. Okay. Well, I, I'd like to, um, you know, implore you uh, to make that change. I think it should be available uh, under both declarations. Over the last decade alone, there have been more than 4,000 emergency declarations in the United States. Now, I represent Boston and the Boston Marathon attack, um, you know, the, the, the ripple effect of, of that trauma some, was it, some of it was immediately manifesting, um, um, but some manifested later. And I think it's time to ensure survivors of all disasters can access counseling and be connected to long-term mental health services. I appreciate your agency has worked with me already on my proposal to expand the program to emergency declarations and that FEMA does not foresee any hindrances to providing crisis counseling to help more people. Um, we would love to follow up with you beyond this hearing and uh, would love to hear your response to that. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we would be happy to continue providing technical drafting assistance on making that change. Um, again, so important that we're taking care of the mental health of those people that have been impacted by these traumatic events. Well, I did also want to, because I always seek to engage those closest to the pain, um, Manya Chalinski, who's a survivor of the Boston Marathon bombing, she shared her story and named that she wishes the assistance provided under the crisis counseling program had existed for her uh, eight years ago. So it really is time again to ensure that survivors of all disasters can access counseling and be connected to long-term mental health services. So we look forward to being in touch with you about that. And with little time I have remaining, if you could respond to, um, you know, what are the provisions and what are the plans for those that are disabled um, those that are incarcerated and those that are hospitalized uh, when it comes to a major disaster or an emergency declaration. Are there any protocols in place, any plans? 
Um, I don't know that I'm understanding specifically what you're asking, but um, our disaster response programs, when we respond to incidents, it's to help all people that have been impacted by those disasters. Um, we do have an entire unit here that focuses on the planning and preparedness for individuals with disabilities. And we work closely with our state partners through our regional offices to understand the unique situations within each of the communities once a disaster has happened, like those that may have been incarcerated. Okay. All right. Thank well, you. we'll follow up on that as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lady yields back. And, and without objection, Mr. Troy Carter from Louisiana. 